Here's a situation. You have a website with Google Tag Manager installed, but now your company wants to change the website or maybe just the domain. So the question is, what should you do with your Google Tag Manager container in this case? Well, let me show you. So the migration process depends on how complex your setup is and what kind of tools have you installed with Google Tag Manager. For example, here I have a very basic container where there are just several tags and they fire when the page loads. I also have a scroll tag, but there are no specific triggers or tags that are relying on website elements. For example, I'm not tracking any clicks. I'm not tracking any form submissions. So in this case, the migration process would be very simple. If you move from one website to another website, then basically you could just tell your developers to install this Google Tag Manager container on that new website. And these tags will still fire just fine. Now, another thing that you should check is the settings of the tools that you have installed with Google Tag Manager. For example, if you have Google Analytics 4, then some settings should be changed there. For example, if you go to data streams, then select your website data stream, then click configure tag settings. Here you should go to configure your domains. And if you have inserted your previous domain here, then I would recommend that you should insert here or maybe as a new condition, your new domain as well. Optionally, you could also take a look at the settings of the data stream itself. Even though it's not necessary, you can change the stream URL right here. What you need to keep in mind here is that even if you don't change this URL, your Google Analytics will still work just fine. But if you don't want to leave any mess, then of course you could click here and change that domain right here. If you do this, then I think you will also want to change maybe the name of the property because maybe that property right now mentions the previous domain. So this could be done on the account level and on the property level. So for example, you could go to account details and then here change the account name that would reflect the new brand if your company is rebranding. But again, this will not affect your data collection. The main thing that I can think of right now would have been to go to the data streams and then change your domains in the configure tax settings section. But I have already shown how to do that. I cannot give you universal advice on any other tools that you have installed in Google Tag Manager, so you will need to research that on your own. But speaking of the Google Tag Manager setup in general, this kind of basic setup will work just fine if you just remove your container from the old site and then install the same container on the new site. Or in fact, you can even keep container installed on both sides if there is some sort of like transitional period. But if your setup is more complex and maybe you have triggers such as click related triggers or triggers related to specific forms, then the first thing that I would suggest that you do is of course, ask the developer to install this container on a new website and then preview and see which tags fire and which ones don't. For example, if you just change the domain of the website, but the structure of the site remains the same, then these triggers will continue working just fine. For example, let's say that this website has changed the domain. Previously, it was a different domain. This container is installed on the website. So now I can just click preview, then enter the domain of the website and check if those tags work. Maybe it would even make sense for you to create a spreadsheet where you list all the items and then mark them if they work and then maybe add some notes if they don't, which means that you will need to fix those issues. So let's see what we have here. We are tracking menu link clicks and also some form submission. So let's go to the website. Here I have pages and I have the form page. So now I will just submit the form and the CF7 submission event fired and my two tags fired. And this is working exactly as I expect. I can also click on the tag and see if some parameters were sent. I'm sending form IDs. So if I switch to values, I will see the value, although it's not working. Let me check why that is happening. Then I can expand this form ID, but my variable for some reason did not work. So that's the reason why you should always check that. Instead of using event detail contact form ID, I should be using just form ID like this. So let's see how this is working. 
and what should I change? So here, instead of this data layer variable, I should create a new one where the type is data layer variable and its name should be form ID with the uppercase I like this. Now I click save, save the tag and refresh the preview mode to test this new change. So now if I go to the page, then submit the form again, I will see that the event happened, the tag fired, and the value of the parameter is now correct. Now let's imagine that these are the menu items. So we have menu link one, menu link two, and menu link three. I will click this link, this and this. And in the preview mode, I will be looking for those link clicks. Here they are. This is the first one, the tag fired. And on all of these, the tag fired, I can also check their parameter values and they are correct. So it looks like this is still working just fine. And you should repeat the same process for everything. Now, the third scenario is that maybe your company rebranded and they built a brand new website. Maybe they changed the domain, maybe they didn't, but let's say that the website design was changed completely. And instead of this site, they are using a different one, which is this one. So now I will close the preview mode and then I will try to check if this container and the tags inside the container are working with the new website. Since the design has changed, most likely many of the tags will stop working. This will work, this will work, but this probably will not work. The link click will probably definitely not work because this particular trigger is looking for a class which looks like this. So let's see what actually is working. I will click preview, then I will open my other site where the container is also already installed. And here we can see that scrolling works then on container loaded some tags fired. But as you know, we have things like menu item link click tracking. So let me click the first link, the second link, the third link. And in the preview mode, if I check those link click events, none of my tags fired, I can click show next to tags not fired. And then I can select the tag to see which condition was not met. And this is the reason I am looking for this value, but the actual click classes of those links are this one. So I should copy this, then go to the Google Tag Magic container and update my trigger to this. Then click save, refresh the preview mode by clicking the preview button. And now if I click the menu link and then check the event here, I will see that my tag has now fired and it sends the proper data. So this could be one approach, but if you have, let's say hundreds of tags and your Google Tag Manager container was not audited for a long time, I would suggest that maybe you don't actually need to reuse this container. Maybe it's time for you to create a new container, start from scratch. And then what you will probably see is that when you are implementing new stuff in the new container, you will have fewer tags and fewer triggers because it's very likely that a lot of the items that you have in your old container are actually no longer relevant. At least that's what I saw in many projects. So this is something that you and your company might consider. And that's the end of this tutorial. If you found this video useful, hit the like button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.